So welcome to the Dynamic Behaviors online course by Mode Lab. Um, developing rich and responsive behaviors from scratch. Think of bouncing balls, particle systems, or flocking voids. Can be tricky without an object-oriented approach to our program design. Through a series of short presentations and live exercises, learn how to successfully structure and implement classes and processing to create a fun and dynamic object behaviors. I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are Mode Collective. And Mode is a multidisciplinary design collective located here in Brooklyn, New York. And it's comprised of three sets of activities. Uh, lateral, wherein we offer uh, design consulting services, including digital fabrication. Uh, design, which is uh, through which we do our design projects for um, at scales ranging from product to interior scale. And Lab is our share source initiative consisting of a web repository for the creative use of design technology, technology. <clears throat> a series of monthly webinars and bi-monthly workshops that we host here in our studio. So Mode Lab um, is our share source initiative. It's the um, entity that's uh, putting on this uh, course today. And um, you've been to the website, hopefully, uh, to register for this course. And this is the way that we are able to share video and file content um, related to learning, um, primarily about the intersection of design technology. And I mentioned we host workshops. Um, this is our most recent workshop, Lattice Lab, which was back in November. We have another one upcoming in February, which we'll share with you at the end of the course today. Um, and here we were looking uh, in a kind of hands-on intensive environment at uh, lattices, so how we might take advantage of topological modeling techniques and use 3D printing as our mechanism for output. And um, last year saw uh, a lot of workshops, uh, online courses, etc. And here's a kind of matrix of some of the things we've been up to, uh, ranging from events in Boston, here in New York, um, out in California, working with uh, collaborators and participants in workshops directly using our fabrication equipment. So we're really excited about where 2012 has um, taken us and where we're going to go in 2013. More on that soon. And of course, uh, we also maintain a Facebook page, uh, which is really the way that we are um, trying to promote community within our uh, user group. Um, we share news stories about our work, um, events coming up, as well as interesting things that are going on here in New York and around the globe relative to uh, design technology. So if you haven't already, we'd love it if you could go ahead and um, like us or follow us on Facebook um, and take advantage of this as a way to connect with your fellow Mode Collective users. So what are the topics that we're going to cover today? Well, first we're going to talk about what object-oriented programming is and how we might use it in processing. Uh, we're also going to touch on when it's useful to use objects instead of just longhand uh, programming with uh, a lot of variables. Uh, we're also going to talk about how specifically to create classes and define the methods that go along with that class. And if some of this uh, is an unfamiliar territory at this point, that's quite all right. We're going to go ahead and define all of these terms as we go. Lastly, we're going to look at how to store objects and make them interact with let's say their environment or each other, et cetera, within our processing sketch. So a couple of notes before we um, actually dive into the exercises. Um, so the infrastructure for the course includes um, the fact that the course will be two and a half hours long. It will be, uh, there will be question and answer sessions after each exercise. And of course, along the way, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the GoToMeeting question window. After the um, broadcast of the, the course, it will, this course will be recorded and distributed uh, through a series of shorter videos that you're welcome to come back to and reference in the future. You should have received an email with a link to the source files for today, so double check your email. Um, we can also drop it into, the, we've also dropped it into the um, interface through GoToMeeting in case you didn't get the email. Um, just go ahead and drop us a line and we'll make sure that you have that link. Um, the files are for your reference. They'll, they are labeled sequentially, but we'll be developing everything from scratch together. So those are really the, 
the reference files. We'll build everything up together. And at the end, we'll also repackage the files that we produce together and share those with you also. So Ronnie and I are conducting this course simultaneously. I'll be presenting and Ronnie will be answering technical questions on the fly. And if any um, recurring questions come up, uh, Ronnie's going to redirect those relevant topics to me and we'll talk about them as a group. And really our goal here is that we want to create as much as possible a live experience for you within this online learning course environment. So um, let's go ahead and just dive into uh, the course content for today. Um, again, we said we're going to be using processing, so just a recap on what processing is. Um, it is an open source programming language and corresponding development environment for people who want to create images, animations, and interactions. So there are other applications that allow us to write programs and some even allow us to see a visual output, but processing is really uh, intended for those of us that are design oriented or visually oriented to produce um, images, animations, and interactive environments. And as we go, um, and again, this should be a refresher from for those of you who took the Introduction to Processing free course that is still available on our website. But um, to recap the environment itself when we're writing our code in processing, we have uh, a window with tabs uh, where we're writing the actual code. And whenever we hit play, we'll get a visual output in a separate window. In addition to being an actual development environment where we can write code, processing is also an online community that has a wide array of resources now at its, um, that you can access through the website, which is processing.org. Um, and primarily the learning references are going to be under the reference tab, which has all the um, kind of methods that correspond with processing and the language sub-tab, as well as learning. Um, the learning tab also has a, a wide variety of good resources for you to continue your learning within processing. Okay, so we said processing is a programming environment, and again, to recap, programming is creating a set of instructions in order to perform specific operations or exhibit desired behaviors. Our course today is called Dynamic Behaviors with Processing, and that's what we're really going to be looking at and talking about is behaviors. We can make a little calculator to do some uh, to calculate an expression, right, to a specific operation in that way, but uh, we want to look at how we can create visually oriented behaviors. And all of our programs or scripts are really going to be bound by structure and syntax. That's what makes them consistent or unique relative to each other. If we're talking about processing versus Python versus C, etc. And structure really con controls the flow of operations and is generally consistent across our programming languages. This is how we organize our code and whether or not things are encapsulated within certain structural elements or that's just a line-by-line -line reading of your code. Syntax, on the other hand, um, includes all of the rules and principles of the program structure and is going to be more unique per language that you're coding in. Uh, processing is based on Java, therefore it inherits all of Java's structure and syntax rules, right? Um, and Java, if we're unfamiliar with that, as the kind of parent language of processing, is a general purpose, object-oriented language that is specifically designed to work across all platforms. Now here we're starting to talk about object orientation. An object orientation has to do with the structure of our program. Not all programming languages have this type of structural element that we can um, use, but processing and a lot of other more modern uh, languages are very frequently object oriented. It's a very contemporary, contemporary way to develop um, your computer programs um, and it's also, uh, I think, a very intuitive way uh, to be able to do so. Okay, so objects, if we're talking about what object oriented programming is, objects are just one way to encapsulate by that we mean create modules of portions of a program. And those portions might be a property, they might be an action, an operation, etc. But in the, in the kind of general sense, objects are a way to encapsulate um, one part of our code. All right, 